And what I, I've learned a trick on how to restore cast iron. And I thought, uh, I was starting to restore it, and I thought, I should do a video so I could share it with everyone so everyone knows how to do it. Hello. I was out in my camper this morning looking for some things, trying to straighten things up and sort things out, and I happened to find a cast iron pot that wasn't in real good shape, but it had a lid. And so the, the pot is a cheaper made pot and I didn't really see the need. I have so many cast iron pots, I didn't see the need to restore it, but it had a great lid on it. And cast iron lids for, if you have frying pans, you don't get a lid with your frying pan when you buy a frying pan. You have they only come with cast Dutch ovens, with cast iron pots. So um, whenever you can get a lid uh, of different sizes, and this is a size perfect for a size seven. I don't have any lids that will fit perfectly on a size seven cast iron skillet, and so this does. And so, but it's really rusty, as you can see. It's really pretty bad, and the other sides. Rusty pretty bad a little bit, a um, little bit pitted. It's, I don't know if you can see it real well in the in the video, but it's it's pretty pitted. So um, I've been collecting cast iron for a really long time, and I've had some really rough pieces given to me. And I started out restoring them with, by just scraping and scrubbing it up as hard as I can. And it takes a really long time to do it that way. Just um, using an SOS pad, and keep scrubbing and keep scrubbing. And then someone told me about taking um, a potato and some salt and some oil and just keep scrubbing. And that gets off a lot, it really does. But when it's this pitted, um, I learned a trick that you take vinegar. And I have a bowl that's kind of um, uh, laid out kind of shallow. It's a big bowl, kind of shallow. You can use aluminum uh, disposable aluminum pan, roaster pans. Those are really, really good. But I happen to have this plastic bowl. So I'm going to take the lid and I filled it full of vinegar, of white vinegar, your cheap vinegar. Um, and I just fill it up to the point where this will be covered. And I'll move the camera around so you guys can see. But I'm going to put the, the lid down inside. Now I can't completely cover the handle. So what I'll do is um, I'll let it, what you do is you just soak it in the vinegar and the vinegar will actually um, lift up the rust and get it down to the bare metal. And uh, every so often, I like to do it for several days, and every so often I'll just take the, the, pan, the cast iron out, take it to the sink, scrub it up with an SOS pad, rinse it off with some water, and then put it back in again. This way you're loosening off the rust that's there so the vinegar can get deeper. Now, since the handle's not covered, I'll just every I'll just flip it over every so often. Once I'll do one side for a day and then I'll do the other side for a day and I'll just flip it back and forth and I'll continue to take video and so you guys can see the difference. So I'll just keep uh, showing you the progress. And this is day one. And you just, it, It'll take several hours for it to start working on it. And when it does, it'll start foaming up. It'll get really foamy, really grimy looking. Um, but don't, like, throw away and start with fresh. It'll keep doing its job as long as you keep it in there. It doesn't matter how dirty the vinegar gets. It's still active. It'll keep on working. So don't feel like you have to put fresh vinegar in. You just keep using the same vinegar. You could even use it for a very long time. I don't know how long, but I know for at least a week I've known, I've seen people use it for a week and it's still just as active. Now some people will say you dilute it um, with water, like, uh, I can't remember the ratio, but some people will say to dilute it with some water. And 
I've just used straight vinegar. I guess diluting it would make it go further, but I don't think it would be as strong and I think it would take longer to get to, to the point where I want it to get. So this is just straight white vinegar. And it should, um, yeah, and it definitely will get this completely cleaned up. You'll, you'll be amazed. Hello everyone. This is three days later. to take it out and let you guys see. Now, it still looks pretty rough, but it has taken a lot of rough rust off. So this is the time. You can see how much work it's done to it. You're starting to see some of the bare metal in there, but this was so rusty, it's going to definitely need a couple more days. So what I'm going to do is scrub it up right now and use an SOS pad on it, scrub it up really nice and this way everything that is loosened by the vinegar will come off and then the vinegar can work down a little lower. So that's what I'm going to do now. I am amazed. I thought it would have to soak one more time for a day or so but after I started scrubbing it up, it took it down to the bare metal. <laughs> I had to scrub with an SOS pad and um, a stainless steel scrubby uh, for a little while. I did have to work at it, but I, there was some remnants of rust left. But it was mainly like right in here. But I've gotten it all out. And there was some under here still left that I didn't, that was harder for me to scrub. But I kept working at it and I just, I got it out. At least, as if there is a, a little spot here or there, it's not that big a deal. The, um, it's just a lid. I'm not going to be cooking on this. I'm just very pleased. This was just three days of soaking in white vinegar. Three days. And it, as you can see, there's some pits here where it was really rusted. And there's a few pits there. And lots of pits on the top because the lid was actually down. And so this is where the weather got most of it. And this was protected a little more from the moisture. But I'm very, very pleased. Um, I'm going to oil it up and give it a nice patina. It's just amazing to me. I used to do it the hard way and a little bit of vinegar and it does it all for you. Hello. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like before I start putting the patina on. It's got a little bit of a rust on it because I didn't put a patina on it that same day that I cleaned it all up because you know, life happens and there's things to do and I just didn't have time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub it up with some uh, oil and some salt and a rag. And that is a really good way to get the rust out of the cracks and crevices if it's just a light rust. And that's basically what's gotten on here. It's just a very, very light, splotchy little rust. Uh, not your Himalayan salt. You want to use just your iodine cheap salt. Put it in there, take a rag, and just scrub it, and the salt will get black and red, rusty looking. You take that out, you add more salt to it. Don't take, um, don't wash it in between, but um, just keep adding more salt to it, and a little more oil, and keep scrubbing it until you get all the rust off. And so that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I think I'm going to show you over at the sink what it looks like, how to do that, and then I'll wash it off, then put fresh oil on it, and then bake it in the oven and show you how it turns out. Right now I'm just using old, um, already used peanut oil that I fried something in not too long ago and I thought 
that would be perfect to just scrub it up with. But once I wash it up, and I do want to put a patina on it, I'm going to use lard, uh, baking grease. I prefer that. oil and then I will use the the baking grease on it now so there it is we're gonna put the patina on I like to take baking grease put it on a rag Now you don't want it too thick of an of a coat of oil of of the grease on it. Too much it will just drip off or it will puddle on the cast iron and it will uh, the thinner parts will bake into and make a, a, a patina but the thicker parts will not bake all the way in and absorb all the way in and leave little marks soft little that you could scratch off that of the oil it'll leave little puddles little dots all over it where it didn't sink in and didn't turn into a patina and so i always when that happens which i've learned to try my best not to let that happen if that does happen then i just go scrape that off re-patina it uh, re-oil it and then put it right back into the oven and let it go again and another thing i've learned is at first I was reading all these ways to put a patina on your cast iron from other people and they were saying put it at 250 or 300 for like three hours or something like that and I never got good results with that I always having uh, the oil didn't get baked into the cast iron so I changed it I went up to like 450 500 I think I'm going to do 450 today and then I would just do shorter time periods and then I'd let it run for about 10-15 minutes, turn it off and the most important part of doing a patina, I mean not the most important, but it, it is important, is just to turn the stove off and let it rest. Let the stove cool down naturally. Let the cast iron cool down naturally. Uh, the cast iron can warp and can uh, actually break sometimes, crack, if there's a t quick temperature change. Now, I'm not saying for sure it would happen. I just don't like taking that chance. So it's always best just to let your cast iron rest in the oven and 
until it cools down to a reasonable temp temperature. Then you can take it out, put it on your stove, and let it finish cooling on top of the stove. But some people even recommend letting it uh, sit sit on sit inside the oven until everything's completely cooled down. You can do it that way, or you can just let everything cool down until it's very very a very reasonable coolness and then take it out and let it finish on top. But uh, quick temperature changes can crack cast iron. And so, okay, now I got a thin coat on it. I think I'm gonna go over it and just kinda. Now, I'm doing something I shouldn't. It's only because I don't have no lint-free towels, but it'll be all right. It'll brush off. But I'm using a rag to put on the oil. It can leave little fibers behind. And, but it's not going to really make a big difference. I kind of just take my hands over it. Wipe off the excess little hairs. And they come right off. There we go. It is recommended to use lint-free uh, paper towels. And I just don't have it today. <laughs> and I just go with what I have. And it'll work. I've done it before without using lint free rags. Uh, so, there we go. Now, another thing I like to do is I'll put. Now, if this was a skillet, I would put the skillet upside down. And, uh, and then I always put a cookie sheet underneath of it. And I'll. Since it cups this way on the lid, it, naturally, I'll just put it in like this, this time. And uh, I'll put this on the upper rack, and then I'll put my cookie sheet underneath. And what it does is, it keeps, if there is any oil that drips off, it drips onto the cookie sheet, and it doesn't run down into your oven and start smoking and catching, <laughs> I don't know if it would catch on fire, but it's an electric oven, so who knows. So, um, I just don't like taking that chance. So, this one's ready. I'll let you get a good look at it all oiled up. There we go. Now, I'll have to do this several times to get a really nice patina on it. This is just the first coat. So, there we go. and three and four is the best. Baking each coat at 450 for a good 10 to 15 minutes. And I baked it on hard. I don't know if you can see. There's a big difference. I like using bacon grease, lard, natural oils to put a patina on it. Everyone has their own favorite, but I prefer... Eh, I don't think butter would be could be used, but uh, uh, anything that can take a high heat. Um, so uh, peanut oil, uh, lard, baking grease, those kind of things. I think I heard of some people doing coconut oil. I'm not quite sure on that one. I do believe so, coconut oil. But I prefer baking grease. And uh, it bakes on really, really... Um, hard and shiny and this lid is like a you would never have known it had been pitted and in terrible terrible awful condition so if you find a piece of cast iron at a yard sale or flea market or an auction and it's what you think you could need and there's just a little there's some surface rust on it or even if there's some pitting um it can all be fixed. As long as it's not warped, 
and um, you usually can run your hands across it and tell that it's not warped. Don't be intimidated by it. Uh, I know before I started using cast iron, I used to think, oh, to have cast iron, you gotta know how to put a, um, how to season it, how to put a patina on it. And I would be like, oh, that's just too much to do. But once, uh, I think uh, a good friend of mine had given me a, a cast iron skillet, and after that, that was all she wrote. I liked nothing but cast iron skillets from there on out, so. You can always get cast iron a lot cheaper when you buy it from flea markets and yard sales. It'll be a lot cheaper to get it that way than buying new cast iron from the store. And the patina on the new stuff is a lot rougher and it's not as nice. So I recommend restoring it if you can. I hope this uh, video has been informative and has helped you in some way. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell. Um, it would truly be appreciated. I hope you all have a blessed day.